All right. Well, I. Hello, everyone. Hi, everyone in the chat, everyone from the future. My name is Guillaume. I'm here with Thomas Guitars and Basses, and I have the absolute pleasure to be talking to Matt Heafy. How are you, Matt? Very good, man. I am so sorry about my lateness. I'm so sorry I was out here like recording vocals. Like I had the dates mixed up, didn't have the reminder. So I'm That's so, all good. I'm so sorry. It was, At least it's it was actually super funny. Like we were commenting on Twitch. <laughs> like, Dude, hey, man. I'm so sorry, man. No, it was it was it was really fun. Not I'm bad. Sorry, couldn't finish. Um <laughs> no, it's all good. But yeah, it's really it's really good to have you here, man. Thank you so Thank much you. for taking the time. Of course, man, of course. Um it's a live Q&A, so we're going to take a bunch of questions uh, from the chat. I hope everyone out there is uh, all safe and good. We already have quite a few questions. Awesome. And um, so I'm just going to start straight in, if that's OK with you. Of course. Um, and obviously, first ones were regarding your gear, mostly. This is Love a it. gear channel, and people were curious. You've been teasing uh, an amp quite a bit as of late. and can you tell us more about this? Is there anything happening? Um, well, obviously, because the state of the world, everything is slowed down, especially things in like kind of old school equipment like amps. So we were yeah. getting pretty far along in development. We were already actually making designs with one of our good friends, Jody. Um, he had everything spec'd out. He actually spec'd out all my upcoming Epiphones as well. We had it all ready to go. Oh, wow. Everything shut down. All the plans for that amp company shut down. So all the plans are just on an indefinite hold right now. So we want to go with we want to go for it, but we're just not really sure when it's happening. For sure, but there is something happening. Yes, uh, allegedly, allegedly, allegedly. According, to, according to them, it's still happening. So I really hope so um, because I really want to make it happen because we've always wanted to. We've always wanted to have a one-stop shop amp because people are always like, what amp should I use? What pedal should I use? What guitar should yeah. I use? We wanted to have one that had it all built in so you don't have to buy all the gear on top of it. You could just get it and be ready to go. So that was the plan with it. We had all the integrations that we want to integrate without revealing oh, well. too much information so no one takes those ideas. But we had it where <laughs> like, if you wanted to sound like Trivium or Gojira or At The Gates or In Flames or Kill Switch or that modern metal tone, modern metal yeah. or modern metal core or modern melodic death metal, it was ready to go. So it's on hold. We'll see what happens. And that does sound allegedly really, really good. Yeah, we have some other uh, really cool gear plans as well because it's just been, as you can see all this stuff right here. Oh, shoot, you can't see it with this camera. You can see it with uh, that camera. Yeah. I've been collecting so much gear lately. Um, I'm looking at, I've got original 5150 block, 5152 original, a 6534 plus, and a 6505. Um, and then probably 30 or 40 pedals. And this is all Corey Bull use fault. Uh -huh. <laughs> because we're using, like, campers are incredible. Campers are something oh, yeah. we'll always use for Australia or Asia or South Africa or South, South America or whatever we're doing, fly-in dates like that. We'll always use campers and modelers. But yeah. when we can use our semi and we can use our bus, we're going to have analog gear. So I currently have, like, the whole Max on 40th Anniversary Edition stuff, all the Fortin mm -hmm. stuff, all the Eris stuff, all the MXR stuff. Um, it's pretty insane. I do have everything rigged up into here, though. So I can show you the audio exactly. And I can show the listeners my audio. That's ready to oh, go. Oh, really? So whenever we're done with the questions, yeah, I can show you oh, my, the that new Gibson be... that was just sent to me. They just sent me ah. a gold top, 57 VOS. And I hear it was thinking that I need modern pickups. Wait till no, wait you to don't. Hear. Wait to hear yeah. it. It's insane. Yeah. So I can, oh. I can show that to your chat whenever you're ready. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. We, we, we sure are going to do that. Hi, Stan. Hi. Oh, Poomin Jay's here. Apparently, you're still live on Twitch. Yeah, yeah, I'm doing both. Some people, <laughs> that's cool. That's awesome. Um, okay, just just while we're into gear, and because most of the preliminary questions were about this, um, revamp of your uh, Epiphone signature. Uh, we'll go more into details about this shortly. Uh, but one of my one of my best friends here, Mikkel, is a massive fan of yours as well, and uh, he's been in love with the Explorer uh, custom guitar that you had on the Chapman. Uh, live, I think, and like here oh, and yeah. there, and um, he, he literally said that he would kill to get a seven-string <laughs> version of that Epiphone Explorer Hefe mm -hmm. signature. Is that something that we could possibly look forward to? Maybe down the line, especially knowing, seeing that there's so much interest in that. My the, the old one, that white one he's referring to, is in storage yeah. in Europe. It's in safekeeping with one with one of my friends. He's he's guarding it with his life right now, and he's in my <laughs> chat right now laughing. He's guarding Trust it with his your life. Friends. Trust yes, he's he's got it right now in Europe. Um, as I said he could borrow it for a little while. That's a good idea. But what we have coming out with the Epiphone line, we've got the MKH Origins. So what it's going to be, it's going to be a duplicate of all my old original guitars, the first guitars everyone ever saw me with. Um, 
the first Les Paul custom. Yeah. Uh, I'll just I'll show it to you one second. Oh yeah, please. If you guys haven't seen that yet, Matt put out a video a couple of weeks back presenting all of his guitars, and that's a really good watch. And here is it. Oh, my. Yeah, okay. This one. I don't have my headphones Please. on. I'll have my headphones <laughs> back in a second. But you can see okay. how much I've used this one by how the neck is just destroyed from playing it so much. But this is what my Epiphone was based off of, the original ones that everyone, people own now. Uh, Matt, I think your blurry Skype background is still on. Uh oh, we lost uh, your video. Yeah, no, no, that's all good. Uh, the blurred background on Skype is is on, so like some of the details on the guitar were kind of oh no, uh, I don't know out. why that's on. Let me see if I could turn that off. Skype always does random things. Yeah, yeah. It's in audio and video settings. Uh, <laughs> blurry filter, blurry. Fil yeah, we we're fixing that. That's all good. They must oh, have. So they must have added that because they're trying to compete with Zoom or something, because that has never been on before. Yeah. Where is that setting? The the. Uh, I guess uh, video audio, audio video. video settings, and mm -hmm. then yeah, blow add oh, image or there we go. Oh yeah, awesome. Much better. That is so that looks, that on. That looks a lot better. One second, I'm trying to get your thing back on here now. I was uh, I was just telling the guys in the chat to to go and check out the video you did a couple weeks back on like all of your guitar collection. Yeah, uh, so that was a really fun watch. Yeah, cool. it's it's nuts. I've got a whole bunch of stuff. It's kind of getting out of control right now. All the true gearheads. If you don't know what this thing is, then you're not a true gearhead. Oh this thing I've had to scour the earth for because apparently <laughs> Frederick Thorendal from Meshuggah has bought all of them and is holding <laughs> all of them in some bunker somewhere. That so I finally sense. have three of these. Because um, what modern metal tone has always been about, as everyone in here knows, has always been about throwing some form of an overdrive in front of yeah. some form of a head. Um, but what most guys would always do, ourselves included, we'd always have the drive at zero. We'd always turn the drive all the way at zero, level yeah. all the way up. Corey had did his research. He said, basically, what we're doing is we're not using an overdrive at that point. We're using a clean boost at that point. And then he mentioned this thing. And he's like, unfortunately, you can't get it anywhere. It has the weirdest power. It's got a 3.5 millimeter mini jack power that you have uh, to use. Uh, you can use 9 volt power, but it actually won't work with the pedal. So you have to get up to 24 volts to make it work. Uh, that's up convenient. to 36 max. So I scoured the planet. Um, I posted on every single social media and then Two of my friends from my channel found three of them. Uh, Heavy Metal Tanny from Germany found two of these. And then my friend Veterans Gaming found another one. So now I have them. All three sound different, of course, because just like all vintage gear, nothing yeah, else sounds the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But dude, when, when, when we're done with questions and I show you my tone, I, I'd say it's my favorite tone I've ever had. I think it's better than our record tones. <laughs> so, Whoa. yeah. That's promising. Yes. Um, Oh, yeah, we're there talking were, about Origins. Sorry, I just Yeah, I, I we were talking course. about the new... Uh, yeah, yeah, that... <laughs> um, but so, so all my originals uh, were based off of that original, original Les Paul custom. Yeah. The, the black one that you see, the snowfall. Now those are completely discon discontinued. So if anyone who has them or has been thinking about getting them, they'll never be made again. We're never doing that paint job again. So that means their value is going to go up. So collect them now, kids. Um, I, think, I think the white one is completely sold out in the world. Um, the black one, there's probably like... 20 left the origin series is going to be the guitars that people first ever saw me with it's going to look exactly like that guitar it's going to be the black and gold les paul custom except it's going to have my custom fishman fluences in them yeah. an option for ever tune there'll be six and seven black and white so six seven six seven black white black white and essentially that's eight different versions so all non ever tune and all ever tune we're oh, also doing my. the same thing with kramer super strats we're um basing it off the sm1 which is my favorite super strat by kramer because yeah. kramer's under the gibson family so we're gonna do that um black white black white six seven six seven the scale length is going to be 25 and a half my mkh fishman fluence is in them with or without ever tune um the les pauls a lot of people have been asking about scale length on those the original les paul scale length is perfect for six string the 25 24 and three quarters yeah we're leaving it at that but we're going to switch we're going to test it first at 25.5 with 22 frets for the seven string i don't think okay. 24 frets makes sense on a les paul i don't like the way it looks i think it makes it feel strange i got um, that 
we're going to try that. And then in the future, future, I don't know if I'm supposed to be discussing all these plans yet, but hey, what the heck? I didn't, I didn't yeah. get a debrief. <laughs> um, we're also going to work on, this might be a year or two from now, a Steinberger modernized eight string multi scale. Oh, so wow. That'll be sick because as that's people, a leap. Yes, yes. Because I'm obsessed with eight strings now. And yeah, yeah. Some, some of these other brands. That, the, yeah, because I'm, ex- and- yep, I'm exclusive to Gibson Epiphone for all things Trivium Live, Trivium Studio, yeah. Trivium Documentary, Trivium Videos. But for like collections and stuff, I like to collect other stuff that I don't really bring on tour. And I've been able to play some really incredible guitars. And I was like, uh-huh. I, I want to see if I can engineer one with the fine folks at Gibson for Steinberger. Cool. That that sounds really exciting. Man. That's really an. I was not expecting that at all. I was like more seeing a different shape or maybe a different kind of finish. But that's a okay. That's a big leap. Um, Wally, that there is a is is a recurrent guy on the chat. He's a really cool dude. He's asking if we're looking at stainless steel frets on the new models. Um, we'll keep with where they've been like my big thing with gear and anything that I put my name on it is I want it to be affordable by all of our fans I always think yeah that so if if stainless steel is looking like the best option then it feels the best and it's gonna be the most affordable thing then, that, then I'm gonna stick with that um, that's why I do get questions a lot people like well why don't you have a signature Gibson and I always say like you know that that's a price point like I love Gibsons they're freaking incredible yeah but I want something that People that are just jumping into guitar now, a 12-year-old, 13-year-old, who, like I was when I picked up guitar, can afford it or ask their parents to buy it. It's not exorbitant, and it's something they can play for 20 years. Yeah, that's that's a really admirable vision, I think. And I, I really believe that Epiphone's been hit, hitting it out of the park with, with your signatures mm-hmm. and, and Bjorn's signatures and like yep. the, all these models that came out so affordable and so well-made. It was really, really cool to watch. Yep, and I um, only bring my Epiphones on tour. I, that, yeah, that says true. a lot. I could bring yeah. my Gibsons, but I only bring my Epiphones. And my white Snowfall right now, up until the gold top showed up, is the best sounding guitar in my collection. It sounds better than every single other guitar, on, which is crazy. And I will show both of those to you guys. Oh, man. I, I, I don't have any Gibson. I only have like Epiphone, uh, um, Les Paul P90, whatever. And it, it did knock some Gibsons way out as well, like in terms of how good it's it sounds. It's nuts. So it's they're nuts. really well built instruments. Um, Jody, the guy that is specking all the guitars, said the the frets right now are nickel, and stainless steel would be an upgrade. So stay, uh, we're going to stick with nickel, likely. Okay. Okay. Cool. There, thank you. There's your answer. Well, it um, had some more questions regarding uh, well, the last album, obviously. What did Denman say? Uh, incredible. Just, thank you just so much. Incredible. Some people uh, are asking uh, if you have any tips from jumping to six to seven because the more you guys go, the more it seems to be uh, seven seven strings. Um, Not exclusively. Mostly. Deadman, Deadman actually has a majority of six on drop D. So it's really preference. And what I've found that anyone who wants to jump into seven string, if you're used to six, just play stuff that you know on six on seven. So if you know how to play Sad But True or you know how to play Like Light to the Flies, play it on seven yeah. string, and that's how you get acclimated to it. Same thing with eight string for me. I felt like there almost was no jump to learning the eight string, really. It's just you start playing riffs you're familiar with, pretend that's the low string, and eventually yeah. build up. Obviously, higher chords, like full chords will be different, but you can experiment, and I feel like after just a couple of hours of playing stuff you're used to playing on, like a, a on more six. strings will be easy. Cool. There you go, Romain. That was, uh, I think that was you. I can't, I'm sorry. I lost the name in the chat, but that was, that was a question from the chat. Okay. Just before we go back into it, uh, I want to talk a little bit about the, the last album and something that I've always admired about Trivium and that is, uh, your lyricism. Um, uh, we'll go back in the gear shortly, guys. Don't worry. I'm still, I'm still a gear head, but, uh, that's something that I really wanted to address with you because every time they, they seem to be, uh, uh, your lyrics are so well thought out and researched and, and meaningful. And to me, they always seem to be a guideline. I don't want to say concept album because it's it's always kind of a misleading term, but like you always have a main line throughout an album. And I've, I, I was always curious to see where that came from, where, where, whether it was Greek mythology or Japanese culture or murders or... You know, whatever is driving you to follow these lines how do you go about that it's really whatever is feeling so, like it, it's something that feels strong that needs to be uh addressed for this one and for the last one what's been really great is 
up until from Ember to Inferno until Sounds of the Snow, I wrote about 99% of the lyrics. And yeah. Paolo has stepped up as being really an incredible lyricist, melody writer, and songwriter over the last two. So he's written quite a bit of the lyrics and the melodies on this one. But I'll think back to like Defiant is one that I wrote pretty much most of the lyrics to. That track, I have my meanings of why I made it the way I made it or why I wrote mm. the things I wrote. Same with um, Sickness Unto You is probably the one that I wrote the most lyrics on. Um, a lot of people are already kind of deciphering what they feel it is, but what we've wanted to push our audience to do is whatever they feel like is the right answer of what this means to them is yeah. right. There is yeah. no right or wrong for now. And I think that after a year or so, when people will start asking again, we'll tell them exactly what we were thinking. So yeah. we want them to really be able to make these their own at first. But we put just as much thought and emphasis in lyrics as we do as music, as stage show, as videos, as everything needs to have its own world. It can't just be good songs. It has to be an entire world that you step into with our band. That is, that that's absolutely true. And I, I love the way you phrase the fact that you don't, you're not telling people what to feel. It's like, take that and make what you will of it. And I, I really appreciate that. Um, Sorry, just going back on the Defiant because that was the first thing that struck me. And then I scrolled down the comment section. I was like, all right, I'm not the only one. Other people have said it. And my, my good friend, Tom, sorry, leading to his question, uh, that was just pure ascendancy. And I was, that was so much, that was the vibe that was right there. And his, his dream is to see ascendancy remastered or reproduced with your means of production now and have something oh. like this and when i heard that song i was like this is <laughs> this is it this i mean is ascendancy sounds perfect so there's there's no like as far as like remastering like what your friends yeah, yeah yeah that record's perfect the only one that really needs something like redone to it would be ember to inferno and that's click tracks but i've discussed with my friends at length and like there's something so cool about the fact that that's the only record that isn't perfectly on tempo like it wavers in and out like yeah, consistently yeah. throughout songs Ascendancy is a perfect record. I would, I would never change anything of it. But with what you said, Defiant, I do love when I look at this record, there are elements of everything that was, everything we did right across records one through eight on on this yeah. one. Defiant, yeah, it is the most Ascendancy thing we've ever had since Ascendancy, but it's also one of the most in wavesy songs we've had. The middle section is very Crusade-esque, that yeah, melody true. section, that down pick section. So it's, it's like a marriage of everything we've ever done. But when we write these songs, we don't think, let's go, let's make something sound like like something from Ascendancy. We just write. And whatever yeah. happens naturally, whatever comes out, is what you hear as the end product. And that's why this record's so diverse. That's why every song is so diverse. It's because we didn't consciously say, we want this to sound just like this or want this to do that. We just made the kind of music that made us feel good. We didn't think, are people going to like this or dislike this? Let's just make whatever we want to make at that time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I... <laughs> Thanks, <man. laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah, no, thank you. Thank you so much for your answer. Um, I'm I'm kind of, I'm processing all of that at the same time. And it, it's, as soon as you mentioned the crusade halfway, like in that, within the song and within, you know, uh, this is, I'm very fond of Ascendancy, but the crusade is the album that got me into Trivium at that's the awesome. time. And I was like 12 or 13. So like, that's the thing that I, personally I identify it with the most and I, I really enjoy like people going about this and seeing that you are still doing that but you're just like mutating into something more progressively and I <laughs> thank you so much man cool to see um it. okay sorry that was that oh, was no worries, my, man thank I wanted you. to always, go I'm into lyrics a like... little bit uh let's uh let's just have a look real quick at the chat I'm sure that I didn't miss anything uh, okay, since you've been talking about the guitars, everyone's asking, uh, do we have any idea of a date for these uh, Kramer and uh, and the new Epiphone model? We had a plan, Gibson and I, we, we had a plan, but obviously that was we had the plan in place before the world got strange. Yeah. So yeah, it slowed everything down, put a big question mark on everything, but as, as right now, it's business as usual, things will happen, it's going to be slightly delayed. So as soon as we have updated plans, I'll be letting everyone know. Okay. That's for you guys in the chat. Uh, uh. Corey and I are also working on some pedals right now, and we're also working on an amp suite. I know it's kind of sounding like I'm like we're Kiss right now, but it's going <laughs> to it's going to spread apart. It's going to be properly done because as we've got into gear, we've seen so many things that we would do differently. Like, all right, this is amazing except for this, or this is amazing except for this. So we've been able to 
establish relationships with like a lot of really great companies and yeah. be able to promote them a little bit. And then we found partners with those specific things that we really love. We found a pedal company that we think is really crushing it that we've been testing some stuff with. We found an amp suite company for next year for, for, for that different bracket or someone who maybe can't afford an amp head in a cab who doesn't have the application for a modeler, maybe doesn't want to get yeah. a modeler, someone that only has like 150 bucks to get a suite and they want to stream with it. We're thinking of those solutions at the same time. Man, that's, yeah, it's a lot. I'm looking forward to the, the comic book, the Trivium comic book. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm going to have diapers soon. I'm sitting at your energy drink. Oh, yes. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that sounds, that sounds really good. That's really exciting. Um, okay, we have a bunch of... Uh, Personal questions in the chat as well. We definitely got to go into that. But while we're still on gear, can you uh, give us a, a listen? Can you, oh, of can course. you show us what you were talking about? I'll show you two things. So I'm going to show you the white MKH Epiphone and just about how it's the greatest sounding guitar right now that yes, I have. Man. And then I'll show you the one that showed up yesterday on my doorstep. Remember, um, when I don't have these on, I can't hear you. But um, I'm yeah, going to have this yeah, on so sure. I can hear my guitar. So that's what we all want. Uh, oh, we've got Amanda here. Hi, Amanda. I'll get on. That's a really good question. I'll get on to your question. I know people are going to ask about why the dual strap, because it makes you play 100 times better. That's why. <laughs> yeah, true. If you guys weren't aware, the dual strap on, on Matt's guitar is something that's been addressed. Uh, can you hear that? Just give me a thumbs up. Oh, wait, wait. This will be no, good. we can hear you. Yeah. There's that one. Sounds pretty good. I'll show you the other one. <laughs> yes. Oh, man, that was heavy. <laughs> well, it, what a right hand. Yes, yes. Left one is pretty good as well. Man. <laughs> oh, that's the new one. Oh, my. Okay. Now, that one sounds amazing. This one also sounds amazing. Hmm. Uh, I'll show you. It's different kinds of amazing. <laughs> Made his rig awesome. Yes, yes, he did. Every phone sounded better. Oh, really, man? Thank Sounds you so much good, for right? that. Sorry, yeah, yeah, no I forgot you had, um, yeah, it's all um, good. Yeah, I'm gonna go on record and say that is the most metal sounding 57 Les Paul that anyone's <laughs> ever played ever. That's just stop. That's out of the box. I haven't changed strings. I haven't changed action. I did nothing. I just plugged right, it in. Holds up. And then the, so so I'm dirty. curious what everyone thinks, which one sounded better, mine? Uh, well, one. like so far, contestors say it's uh, Epiphone. Epiphone sounded better. There you better. go, man. There you go. <laughs> and that is, that is my price point of 1000 bucks versus like 4700 Yeah, So sure. pr proof is in the pudding. So kids, buy my guitar. <laughs> buy my guitar, kids. Hi, his uh, guitar. The okay. signal chain of that is... So my signature, like I mentioned, the difference is the pickups from me Fishman's this time. Yeah. And the Ever, Evertune is available as an option because Evertune is incredible, but it's not for everyone. If people like yeah, to yeah. tune to different tunings, then you're already not able to use an Evertune. My signal chain um, for the white one, MKH Epiphone, Fishman Fluences, Evertune, uh, 10 to 52 gauge Dunlop strings, 
my signature guitar pick, uh, Jazz 3 signature. That goes into an MXR 6-band EQ with just a little bit of boost at 800, a okay. little bit of boost at 1.5. Right, 1.6 and a little bit of cut at 3.2. Um, that's going into the TC integrated pre. Volume is just over eight. Bass is slightly, slightly even on, just barely. Uh, treble is at four. That goes into a Boss NS2. The Boss NS2, I've tested every single noise gate in the world. For some reason, the Boss NS2 is my favorite right now. It yeah. doesn't add any compression, like banging sounds like I've heard with some of the really like kind of sought after ones. Uh, yeah. That's threshold at 10, decay at zero on reduction. That goes into an original 5150 block letter, uh, block letter 5150 PV. That's going into a box of doom, this this Dutch company that makes like a road case with a single speaker in it. Yeah. That's a red back 150 watt with two SM57s doing a fake stereo, because you can't really do a real stereo with it. So it's a fake stereo into Apple Logic with a little bit of high cut, a little bit of low cut into my Apple MacBook Pro, into my <laughs> Asus GL12CM, into your ears uh, so it's an insane rig that we uh, just i had to build out of figuring it out i had to figure it out on my own so. oh yeah man but you're definitely making the most out of it like it's not like it's something you build just for the sake of building it that's like you're using that every single day yep if, yep yeah. every day every day um yeah guys uh, some people in the chat were saying that it sounded better on twitch than here it is because we're going through skype and skype does its own thing with that so if you want to listen to matt do his thing go on and check him out on twitch check him out on his own live streams because we're removing the one added layer of internet essentially yep, yep. yeah so if they were like even hearing it just off my mac versus yeah. my pc it could even be better um, yeah but what i'm doing is i'm bringing so the we like talking about gear the mac is basically just it's just a glorified mixer i'm running the mac with an, an apogee element 46 so i'm running okay. the two mics into the inputs in there i'm um, the vocal chain is an entirely different chain. Um, <laughs> everything runs in the Element 46 into the Mac, then out of the Element 46 into an Apogee Duet that goes into the PC. So I'm actually running two digital two. audio converters, okay, one out, yeah. one in. So every band guy that's been asking me, I've had every band guy from Josh from Architects to Devin Townsend to Carl from Nile to just every single band guy who wants to, wants to learn. I've been helping everyone that I can. I've been explaining that this two system thing is sort of the best one I figured out. But if, the, if someone had a mixer, a mixer would work too, a mixer into the PC. Yeah. It's you really want to get all the audio units off the PC and make the PC just one in and all about the cameras. So I've got a four camera set up. Um, Lumix GH4 is what I'm using for my main face cam here. Uh, you're seeing an Apogee, or sorry, a Logitech Brio that I've got okay. for my fret cam. Another Logitech Brio for my picking cam. A C922 for the fake headstock cam. And then the vocal yeah. chain is insane too. If there's any vocal people out there, SM57 goes into a radial power tube pre into the EQ3 into the Comet compressor. Then that goes into Mac, which has Apogee, another compressor on digitally with a noise gate and then some reverb. Um, I can also do this um, if I felt like it. Um, it's just all ready to go. So it's like I've got a full studio ready to go. <laughs> Man, this is incredible. Yeah, it's, um, it's, it's insane. It's insane. <laughs> Yeah, I've, been, I've I mean I've been doing live streams for about a month now and every week with uh with Rabia in all England and some some studio producers and it's been all really cool and every time there's a new toy in the in the pit you know like a, a new mixer or a new uh, like live stream caster with the camera ins and everything is like it's kind of crazy and now is the best time obviously to get into that kind of thing so you had like you had a heads up on this yeah yes i started three years ago on twitch and two and a half years ago i started with music so at two and a half year point i started building the rig a little bit so is it did you do that because you felt the need to connect more is it just like you had free time or i mean we've always only had our fans we've always only had trivium fans i mean with the exception of ascendancy in the uk that was the only time we were ever a press band 
and we've never really been like a band's band. Meaning, we're not like always on covers of magazines. We're not getting the yeah. awards all the time. We're not the band that other bands are like talking about or wearing their shirts or on the sides of the stage at the festivals. However, we've always been the band that, while there aren't other bands or press people watching us from the sides of the stage at a festival, our crowds are bigger because there's more audience, there's more Trivium supporters than than maybe some of those bands that get the backing of press and other bands. So we've always only had that relationship with our fans. So we've always wanted to give them everything that we could because they give us everything to sustain. So I just, I was talking about wanting to start a YouTube channel after meeting some YouTubers in Spain that we've become good friends with, Jordi Wilde and Joaquin Pan. Mm -hmm. um, Paulo said, he's like, why don't you try Twitch instead? So I started both at the same time, got home, started streaming video games. I really enjoyed it. Um, I would just stream every once in a while on like a crappy webcam and there'd be like 15 people. Actually, um, Trivium Memes from Germany, he just he just celebrated 37 months. He's like the longest standing sub on my channel. Um, so he was there even back then when I'd be playing wow. Overwatch, not really talking to the chat, not knowing what Twitch was. Um, at the two and a half year mark, we played in San Francisco. Twitch invited me to their headquarters because they heard I was streaming on their platform. They let me this thing called the Gun Run Backpack. That's a whole other piece of gear we could dissect and talk about that we stream every single show with from that point. So Trivium has streamed every show as of two and a half years ago for free on our channel. Yeah. Um, I told them how much I love streaming after we'd visit on like a vacation. I was like, but I can't stream as much as I want to because I have to practice guitar one to three hours a day and singing and all this stuff. And my, my friends, Brandon and John, they said, well, why don't you stream that? I said, no one wants to watch me do vocal exercises and practice oh, trivia songs man, every day. <laughs> and lo and behold, they did. And so I started that at, I guess, roughly the two and a half to maybe two and three quarters year mark. And I've been doing that five days a week off tour since and seven days a week on tour. So it's five days a week, two streams a day, seven days a week on tour, three streams, up to three streams a day. And I've been doing That's that for two and a half years. That's just crazy. You know? <laughs> People are really thankful in the in the chat, and I'm I'm sure in general, like I don't see any other band doing that much for their fans. So we, we I say we because I am, and I really appreciate that. Man. Dude, Thank I, you I, I, so I appreciate much. you being in the stuff, man. I'm 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 really grateful for that. Uh, yeah, so it's it's just us giving back, and like my channel's free. People can do just whatever the same amount that someone that decides to subscribe can be done just for free as well. And that's yeah. what I like. There's no paywall. There's no anything like that. People can chat, people can watch. All the archives are there for free. All the Trivium shows are for free. Um, and with this current situation in the world, I've just looked at it as, as giving people an escape, including myself. They do the same thing for me. Yeah. It's like I'm able to be in here and um, you know, it helps pay the baby diaper bill and it helps sure. pay the baby food bill. And that's a great thing. And I'm able to be here and make people forget for a minute about, about the stressful times. And, you know, we've got a lot of people that are furloughed, people that are unemployed now, people that are stuck at home, people that are trying to work with watching kids at the same time. So if I can just get them a little bit of entertainment, that's, that's what I want to do. That's, that's what we all want, man. The, yeah. Thank you for doing it to that extent. And, and that, uh, that much just, it's, it's pretty incredible. Thanks, man. Uh, back to questions, otherwise, because I keep repeating them. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's how they do it. <laughs> um, yeah, Mikkel is asking, "What is what is your favorite band that Trivium inspired? A band that that you know was inspired by Trivium." Yeah, that's the crazy thing. Like, I never thought we'd ever have that, like bands inspired by us. Then I started hearing about bands that, like, maybe we were one of their first bands that they ever saw. Yeah. Um, the fact that Josh from Architect slash Silosis likes Trivium at some point in his life. I think it's just so amazing because Architects is a band I'm so influenced by and I absolutely oh, yeah. love. I love Silosis. I love everything that Josh does. So the fact that, you know, I don't know the extent of how much he was into our band, but the fact that he even was for a minute is just really cool. Um, you know, I was saying a minute ago about how we've never been a band's band, but that's sort of sort of shifted lately because, you know, we've we've always been very vocal about the bands we love, our classic favorites, our new favorites for the oh, whole yeah. time. We've been doing yeah. that since we showed up. Um, and the Fit for an Autopsy guys, man, they're one of my favorite bands in the world, some of our best friends in the world. They posted about our record the day it came out. They've you know, had our back, and we're not used to having that. We're not used to having a band go to bat for us for, for some stuff that we don't need to discuss, some behind-the-scenes stuff. But Fit for an Autopsy <laughs> had my back in this thing. I was like, this is crazy. You, got, you guys make me feel really good. And they, you know, they, they said that we're all family, so that's, it's awesome. It's awesome. That's really good to hear. Uh, I think Josh Josh. And architects in general is a really good pick. Oh, well. yeah, absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> um, okay, Pablo is asking, "What is your favorite Trivium song of all time?" Of all time, I guess. All and time. then, and then, of the last record of all time, probably Shogun. Last record, probably The Defiant. 
Okay. Same. <laughs> oh, <nice. laughs> no, that, uh, yeah, so that was for you, Pablo. I'm trying not to skip the names. Uh, uh, oh, oh, sorry. Sorry, Amanda. I, I meant to go back to your question. Yes, I am curious about Matt's vocal cord injury and how you came back so strong. Something that you've talked about before, but is always kind of impressive. Yeah, I blew my voice out in 2014 on the Vengeance Falls tour. Um, I got home. Matt from Avenged actually texted me, said, hey, I heard you, you hurt your voice. Anything I do to help? And I said, what did you do? And he connected me to Ron Anderson, his vocal coach. Ron has taught everyone from Chris Cornell to Axl Rose to Kelly Clarkson, Adam Levine. I mean, the, the, the latter one maybe doesn't make any sense in this conversation. Um, M Shadows, obviously. His teacher was Freddie Mercury's teacher, Ron Anderson's. So Ron taught me, and we determined by seeing vocal doctors and Ron himself, I had been singing and screaming incorrectly my entire career, basically from when yeah. I was 13 years old. Some people start it correctly. Um, my friend Brandon, I just interviewed him, Brandon from Atreyu, like he naturally started singing correctly and never had to deal with that. He's always had one of my favorite voices in music. Um, but for me, I had a cool voice for recording and for playing shows, but it was insustainable because I was doing it so wrong. So. Yeah. At that point, I started training with Ron, learning how to do it correctly. Then I started incorporating that into my daily routine. Um, Jiu-Jitsu showed me what it is to learn something from the ground up and have regimentation and have drills for getting good at something. So I tried to apply yeah. that to vocals. And then having a stream schedule, honestly, is one of the best things as well. Because I knew on a day that, I didn't, let's say I woke up, I didn't feel like practicing. I was like, no, but I need a stream. I, I, people are depending on me for being there. Even though at the time it was... 50 to 75 to 125 people tops for the, for that hour or so. I was like, no, they're, they're counting on me to be there. So yeah. I'd be there and my entertaining them and them entertaining me is actually me practicing at the same time. So blowing my voice out, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and Twitch streaming have made me the best guitar player and singer front man that I've been ever. Yeah, that's, I, I really, I really enjoy that, that, the these can, I mean, in spite of the, the, the injury, of course, this kind of story, because that show you how much of the outside influences, you know, that that one thing, like your practice routine or something is the way you're going to wake up, the way you're going to start your day. Are you going to work out? Are you doing sports? Are you are you looking forward to something that's going to happen inevitably during that day, whether it's streaming or working? It's, it's like it's really inspiring to hear how how musicians like you sort of go into that set of mind. Um, Definitely. Yeah. And the, the way I try to treat it too, it's not that I try to live. I don't think the way I do it is like the typical musician. I believe the way I try to keep my vocals or my guitar playing is more like an athlete. I try to keep it where there's never an off time. I used to, and I'm sure most musicians that we, that you and I would talk to, let's say half of them or maybe a third of them, um, they would rehearse just before a tour, just before a record, yeah. getting in shape before going on tour, getting in shape for doing a record. But for me, it's, it's gotta be year round. There's, there's, never a, there's never an off time anymore. I used to have off times, like when I get home from tour, but now when I get off tour, if I get home on a Friday night, I'm streaming and singing again by Monday um, just to keep the shape up constantly at all times. Yeah, I think I think that's probably the healthier way of doing it for sure than having like that really, really high high and then going back down. Uh, but don't you feel like it's like, since you started streaming kind of like a nine to five, uh, just um, like having mean, luckily, a regular day job? I've <laughs> never had a real job. My first band and first job was Trivium. We didn't start making quote money yeah. until 2006, starting in 99 to 06, basically being negative money up until then. And <sighs> it's not like we broke big because we're, we're medium sized band. So then at that point, the, the band, when it became cash positive in 2006, that was like my first band, my first job. And I was able to make money playing songs in front of people who like it. And my second quote job of streaming is the same thing. I get to play songs that I wrote with people that like to sing them or type, type sing them. And then I play video games. So it's really not, not too bad. And I love living by a schedule. I know a lot of people don't. Um, my dad is a Marine. My mom is Japanese. So I think it's just baked into the cake to want to be incredibly regimented. I, I feel comfort out of knowing I'm going to wake up at the same time every day, eat at the same time every day, do the same thing every day, or have a scheduled thing that I'm going to do that day. I know yeah. that sounds very stressful for a lot of people out there, but I prefer it. I work better off of it. And if I just go into not knowing what's happening, that, that's, that's a state I don't like to be in. I, I, I get that. I definitely do. It does depend a lot on personality, of course, but I think that kind of that kind of routine and that thing that keeps you grounded into reality and into like a proper schedule uh, is is crucial, at least for some people, I, I guess you included. Uh, but thank you very much for your answer. Man. Um, we have obviously a ton of questions on touring 
And I suppose it's weird as well to be releasing an album at a time when touring is just completely impossible. Um, did you have something planned? Did you do you have still something planned but just postponed? How is that going to work as I mean, far for, as now? It's for us, we've been seeing a lot of bands postponing their records, and the way mm. we thought of it, like the, all the reasons were always like, oh, record sales. And for us, we're yeah. like, who cares about record sales right now? People are losing their jobs. People are at home not being able to entertain themselves, not knowing what's next. Why not give them an escape for a minute? So the same ethos that I have for my stream is the same thing we want to do for our record. Like, no, we've got this date set. We had it set well before the world got weird, and we just dropped it that way. It was like, no, we want we want to give people an escape. We don't care about CD sales, especially when our record is streaming anyway. Let's get it out there as soon as possible so people have something yeah. fun. Um, for tours, yes, we had an Asian tour that got canceled because you can't really postpone festivals, but thankfully yeah. we've already re-added both of those dates to January, our Japanese festival Slipknot and our Indonesian festival Slipknot. Those are being rescheduled. Uh, hopefully we can get Thailand and Singapore back as well. Um, for the June North American tour, it's I, I don't know currently what the plan is, but thankfully a tour that large with Megadeth, Lamb of God, Tribune, and Flames, that's something that can just be moved. When a tour is that big with that many big names that's yeah. backed by a large booking agency, it can be moved. I feel for the bands our size and below, the bands that had their own DIY tour set up, those are going to be very hard to reschedule, especially because every, once the floodgates open up, every tour is going to be Absolutely. eating up every single venue. So we're fortunate in the fact that we're teamed up with a very strong package. Same thing we had a thing scheduled for Europe that I think we're going to announce around now that we're obviously not going to announce because that thing is getting postponed but that European thing we have set up we, we set a precedent back when we did I think the Arch Enemy tour was the first one that we or most tours that we do all of our European lineups have always been incredible but in America we've always had we've had some lineups that are okay some that are great but since that North American lineup of Arch Enemy, Trivium, Fit for an Autopsy While She Sleeps, then we did Light the Torch, Avatar, Trivium. We did mm. Code Orange, Trivium, Power Trip, Venom Prison in Europe. We've shown that we only want to tour with the lineups we want to do. So that European yeah. lineup, when we drop that lineup, everyone's heads are going to explode. It's the oh. sickest oh. tour lineup. And that's that's saying, like I just said, Megadeth, Lamb of God, Trivium, and Flames. That's yeah. really great, yeah. too. <laughs> but this one is Okay. As good. I'll say it's I, as good to be, to be politically I, I think I haven't seen you guys live in now close to four years. And Damn, I'm, you I'm really, really... You haven't really seen us with Alex, man? Dude, Alex... No, I haven't seen you with Alex. Oh, oh my wow. God. Yes, please let's talk about Alex. Holy... You've missed mm, out, man. It's a different he band. Is, he's Trivium. such a monster. Yes. Trivium is a different band with Alex live. That's he's, crazy. He's the guy we've always looked for. We've, we, he's the guy we've been searching for our entire career. So if you have not seen us, Alex, you have not seen Trivium. He's, <sighs> okay. He's, okay. Yeah. Well, you know, as yeah. soon as you guys get back on the road, of course. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, there's so many people uh, commenting about you guys keeping Alex for a second, keeping oh, a yeah, drummer for a second. As long like as he doesn't that. quit. I mean, as long as he's not like, you know what, <laughs> screw you guys, I'm going home. Then I have no, we have no reason. Unless he goes crazy or <laughs> he's not going to. Gets, gets some ice cream addiction that we can't handle. I don't know. <laughs> But he's such he's such an incredible yeah, he's a drummer. He's he's the um, guy we've always been looking for. You know, people are, people try to make the drummer thing such a big joke, but we've only had four studio drummers. That's yeah, really yeah. about on par with every other band in the world. For sure. Um, I don't know what that says about drummers. Drummers, <laughs> practice, man. That's all you gotta do. You just gotta practice. That's all you gotta do. Alex understands yeah. that. I understand that. That's all you gotta do. So I don't I don't know I don't know what it is, but. Alex is Alex. Is no, but that is that is a perfect fit, though. I don't want to, you know, throw in shades because there was still, like, I've always one of my favorite part in Trivium outside of the lyrics and the melodies were always how consistently heavy Paolo's bass was, and it was like throughout and mostly disregarded or at least underestimated yep. for sure because his his groundwork on your songs is just phenomenal like the yep. bass sound is crazy and he's one of the main songwriters of the band um colin richardson who everyone knows is like one of the most legendary metal producers of all time said paulo's the best bass player he's ever tracked josh wilbur also said i think the same thing um and when we always talk about how quick like our record took 16 days to track because we're so rehearsed 16 days that's it most uh, bands take two to four months oh, yeah. um drums took like i think three days <laughs> guitars took like two or three days bass took i think about maybe eight to ten hours total for him to do the entire record <laughs> he is that good and he writes some of the best damn songs the band's ever had i mean it's it's nuts that's that's great yeah no but uh, definitely uh an incredible 
selection of, uh, of, of drum and bass section at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, okay, since we talked about the tour, what happened in there? Uh, when are you coming back to Germany? When are you coming back to Germany? There's a lot of German people man, here. Man, I miss Germany so much, man. <laughs> I was just saying yesterday, my wife was like, I miss German food so much. I miss German beer so much. <laughs> Oh. It is. I mean, Germany has really come around for us. It took a minute. It wasn't till in Waves. In Waves was really the breakthrough record for Germany. Yeah. It was in Waves at Wacken. <laughs> in Waves yeah. at Wacken that really blew it up. Um, and since then, it's it's been incredible. Damn it, I'm hungry now. <laughs> just, I mean, my favorite thing in the world when we're on tour in Germany is our days off. We just find like a super old beer hall and all of our band and crew, we just get there really early and we eat and drink all day. Um, I know that that's more of like, like a lot of my like young German friends are like, yeah, that's not really something that younger people do. They don't really always yeah, go to the beer yeah. halls. Um, I forgot the name for it. There's some specific name for like when like. It's like Biergarten. Uh, no, like when older gentlemen all like hang out at the pub. There's like some name for that. There's some very German name. Okay. A phrase. Uh, I mean, my German my German's okay, but. It's yes, maybe? that's the one. Was it, was it word? He just yeah. said it. Stammtisch. Stammtisch. Stammtisch, yeah. <laughs> That's the one. That's the word. So I was like, man, it's always like Stammtisch with these like older gentlemen there. They're hanging out. But I feel like it's such a cool vibe that I don't know. Maybe I'll make some new like buy some old pubs in Germany one day and uh, make it where all like the 20 year olds go and hang out because it's just such an incredible thing to like be able to sit with your friends and just talk about whatever. Um, but yeah, I, I have a very fond love for Germany and I'm very upset that for, I was supposed to go over for Wacken if we weren't on tour then yes yeah. you know I've been doing a lot of work with them lately and I, I did that um hosting the gaming village last time which was super super fun just to actually be there and not have to worry about a show just yeah. to play games with people there and to eat and hang out with the Wacken crew and the Wacken staff so I can't wait to get back I I miss Bratka Tuffeln and Schnitzel oh, yeah. and have, <laughs> I know when I talk about beer though in Germany which is really funny about Germans and beer. When you say one is your favorite, a bunch of people agree, and then a bunch of people hate that style. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I love it's really Hefe polarizing. Hefeweizen, I love so much, and then I'll meet people like, dude, that's the greatest, and they'll, ah, that's that's piss beer. Man, we have uh, some incredible beers in Bamberg, just like right next to Taubman. So whenever, whenever you're anywhere near Munich or Bavaria, I was like, please hit me up. I'll show you around, man. This yeah, is yeah, I'd love to, man, love to. Um, what else is the? Uh, I love. The Cologne Dusseldorf battle of beer. I love that because yeah. we've got some crew that we have some crew that's from Dusseldorf and some crew that's from Cologne. <laughs> and they always say, like, when the opposite, like, our, our dude from Dusseldorf obviously prefers alt beer. When he's in Cologne, he's like, he'll drink like 30 to 50 uh, Kolsch's. And I'm like, dude, you said this stuff's not good. He's like, yeah, it's pissed. And he just like keeps drinking. <laughs> <laughs> that's Boris, that's our the light spirit. guy. That Boris is the Dusseldorf spirit. represent. <laughs> Shout out to Dusseldorf then. <laughs> but all of the beer, we, miss. we also miss our beer culture right now. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's uh, Volkswagen and um, a bunch of really excited German people. I have to go. I'm, I'm make a new I'll have movement. to go back. I think the first comment in the chat was someone screaming in waves. That kind of <laughs> echoed what you were saying earlier. Yep. Oh yeah. Uh, We'll check up on this. Uh, okay, let's try to find another question. Oh, well, while we're on the sub, uh, yeah, topic of Germany, someone's asking about your favorite German band. Mm, um, so I've always said that Trivium's upbringing were into the original metal bands that everyone gets into at first. Then I got into melodic death metal, black metal, death metal, but it was really getting yeah. into metalcore and hardcore that mixed up the Trivium sound a lot. And those first two metalcore bands I've ever heard in my life were Heaven Shall Burn and Caliban. Heaven Shall Burn, Whatever It May Take, and Caliban, Shadow Hearts. Those were two massively, massively influential records on me. And you can hear that because if you are able to get the stuff before Ember to Inferno, like the Blue Demo, that's when it was more melodic death metal thrash. Yeah. And then I got into metalcore through those two bands, and then it really opened up from there. That's when we got signed to the German metalcore label Life Force. That was our first record label. Same label that Caliban and Heaven Shall Burn also started on. Um, and you can hear that, that that metalcore influence on top of everything that we were into really changed up what we were. Yeah. Um, whatever it may take. Hell yeah. He's really happy with your answer. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and obviously, I, I cameoed on any given day's song. Um, I was on one of their. I was in one of their videos, one of their songs. Uh, it's it's crazy to see how well the German, all German scenes in general, are doing right now. So oh, yeah. when we first ever toured over there, it was much smaller. Like I'm sure that there were like different pockets, but when we like supported different bands, but you've got like 
the Amon Amarth realm that is crushing it. You've got bands like that absolutely yeah. destroying it. You've got bands like Architects and Parkway who are, who are able to go over there and crush it. Like the scenes are just doing very well right now. Like Metalcore yeah. is doing well. Metal's doing well. Power Metal is always doing well over there. Um, it's, it's amazing. Absolutely. I, I, I grew up in, in the east of France and like we couldn't have any concert in my area. I had to go across the border and go watch all these like you guys and architects and, and parkways. I, either Germany or Luxembourg, but it was always it was always there. It's, yeah. it's always yeah. It's <laughs> it's a really good place to be right now. I mean right now. You know. As now. Yep. yep. An- anyways, anyways. Um some more hypothetical questions if it could play if you could play with any other band for fun who would it be um like a show or just like on stage with them uh not non-specific it just said Mm. that his would be merciful fate pool ninja are you talking about a show or i mean if it's a show we've toured with pretty much every single band ever and all of our favorite bands we've got that covered but if we're to play with uh, another band live i don't know Maybe Emperor, Ishan? Cool. My kid's yelling in the background. <laughs> I, don't you, I don't know if you can hear him or not. Um, there was a question about that, I think, earlier. What's about your new... Do, wait, I'm, I'm going to find it. I'm going to find it. Uh, black Metal Project with Ishan. Oh, yeah, Mritu. Mritu. Yeah, there was, there was, I, I'm going to find... What's new about the project, I think, was the question? Um, we're still steadily working on it. I've been working on that project for about 10 years now with Ishan. So yeah. it's getting closer. The, the, songs, the songs are recorded with guitar, bass, uh, the vocals. I'm currently like finalizing writing of it. Alex is doing drums on it. Um, Ishan has been doing all the instrumentation and orchestrations on it. So okay. soon, hopefully sometime in the middle of next year. All right, cool. Uh, I, I, I'm sorry, uh, person in the chat, I, I couldn't find the question again, but uh, there's your answer. Um, all this talking about food, I had to have a protein shake just to like, <laughs> I was thinking about schnitzel, I was like, I'm gonna go crazy. I get that. <laughs> um, oh, Tobias has been asking that, que- that question for a while as well. I'm sorry, Tobias. Here we go. What is your in-ear monitoring system for live, Matt? JH Audio is who we use. Um, they're out of Florida. They're incredible. We use that and have a monitor guy. I believe we use the Midas M32R. Mm-hmm. Is the I think that's the monitor board we use. I, I don't really mess with that. Our monitor guy messes with that. But the JH Audio... Um, I think I use the Roxanne's is what I use. They're, they're amazing. But then what I use for streaming is German company, Biodynamic. Yeah. <laughs> and I also use a German company for my monitor speakers on here, the Atom Audio. Oh, that is, that is a, there's some a good of, references. A lot of German right? love, man. A lot of oh, German yeah, love. Oh, yeah, definitely. Thank you very much for that. I yeah, know these are really cool, uh, uh, cool brands and, and really good products as well. Um, I love that. I okay, Onua, Onua. I'm I'm trying Onua. I listened to a podcast of Paolo on Heavy Blog is Heavy. He said that no special edition would be released for this album. What would have been the song they would? Okay, that is a weird phrasing. Uh, do you, what would have been the song they would cover if there was a special edition? Well, there so is a special edition. Songs. There is. Are there are extra B sides only for Japan? Okay. And there's an acoustic version of Bleeding to Me and an acoustic version of Scattering. Um, we just felt like we didn't need to do it this time. We might be doing some other stuff coming up here once stuff sort of goes kind of back to normal-ish. Um, mm-hmm. A couple covers we've been talking about and a couple originals and some secret cool stuff that I can't mention. Cool. So there will be something. Yes, there will be stuff. Uh, cool. Well, Trivium plays Shogun live. Oh, we have. We have played it before. It's just been a long time. And now that we have nine records, it's really hard to pick what our set list is. It's going to be so yeah. difficult to pick songs. Everyone's going to be upset every single tour. They're be like, you didn't play this song, this song, this song. So it's just so the, the reality. So that Iron yeah. Maiden Metallica curse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't, I, even I, it's like, I understand how big of, a, of an issue that is to go into such a big catalog and trying to pick out the songs that will make the set. It's but it, really tough. every time I'm watching a gig, I'm, I'm still always disappointed. Like, yep. it's like, oh yep. man, he didn't do that one. Yep. Why did they do it? <laughs> That's why I just tell people, watch on the stream and request what you want. I've done yeah, yeah. Amber from start to finish, Ascendancy start to finish, Shogun start to finish, and Wave start to finish. 
Sin, start to finish, and Dead Men. So I could do six of the records from start to finish now. I don't know. It's, over. it's Vengeance, Silence, and Crusade. I don't know all the songs. I'm, I'm trying, but it's, it's too much. It's too much for my brain. <laughs> that is a lot of songs. It's a lot of songs. We're actually going to start uh, streaming all of our band practices, too. Oh, yeah? And band practices. Yeah, we're working on oh, actually that's... purchasing an old airplane hangar and turning it into a practice place <laughs> slash studio that we'll also stream in. So we're having like a custom streaming PC being built. We're going to have multiple, like four to six camera, like HD DSLR cameras set up. So we're, gonna, we're, on, we're on top of it. We're oh, always, so always a couple cool. steps ahead. Yep. That is so cool. That is such a genius idea, though. Mm -hmm. why, why is no one doing it? This, this they're, is brilliant. They're trying. They're trying. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking forward to see that. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm sorry. I haven't looked at the time at all. I don't know. What time is it? Uh, 12.40. Uh, sorry. Or sorry, 11.40. Wow. Yeah, it's, really, been, uh, it's been a, a, about an hour. I guess we'll take, a, if that's cool with you, a couple yeah. more questions and, yep, sure and call it. I don't want to take too much of your no time. No worries. Yeah, next is uh, getting the kids ready for nap time. So. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, then we don't want to make that wait too long. Um, Paul Harder is a must. We do have some uh, question. I heard read somewhere that the that you and the other fellows from Trivium playing Ghost occasionally. Is that true? I I wish it were, but it's not. But I should have just played along. <laughs> I didn't want to lie to him. <laughs> That's okay. We can we can be doing some myth busting as well in yeah. here. <laughs> I have, covered, I have covered a lot of Ghost. If people ever want to see me, I've covered, I think, 450 or 500 songs of everyone from Ghost to Amon Amarth to... I've done a ton of German songs singing in German. Oh, um, man. Since we're on the topic of Germany. I've done sure. multiple Rammstein covers, multiple Lindemann covers. I did uh, Kling, Glickchen, Kling, and a bunch of other German songs. That They're all on YouTube.com slash Matthew K. Hafey. They're all there. Yeah, you guys will be linking all of that in the description box anyways. YouTube, Twitch, websites for Trivium, for Matt. So go check all of that out. And Someone did challenge me to do an Equilibrium song. Um, which song was it? That They'll let me know in a second. It's not that it was too hard. It's that I couldn't find chords for it too. So I had to figure all the guitar parts out first and yeah. then, then try to pronounce the words and then lo learn the vocal melodies. It was too difficult. Yeah. Um, but maybe we'll That's get back to that. <laughs> There's so was, much uh, like going on with doing that kind of thing. Verst House, it was was the one. Verst House. Okay. A Verst House? Is it Verst House or Verst House? I'm not sure. Verst House. Verst House. Oh. There's someone. There's. Uh, yeah, trivia memes in the chat confirming that it is that song. <laughs> I call it <laughs> Um. Okay. Oh, Ver Verst House, not Verst House. Verst House. That's how scavity. I'm not sure. It was, it was I'm too not. hard. Like Sorry, if the yeah. chords were there, if the chords were pre-written, it would have been easier. But when it's a different yeah. language, it's really, really tough. I mean, obviously, you guys speak English and German, but us Americans really know how to speak one language, and that's American. <laughs> so it's a little difficult for us. But we've done songs in Portuguese, Italian, uh, Japanese, yeah. German, uh, a bunch of other stuff. <laughs> Spanish. Oh, and, and, and yeah, you do, you do know. And every time, every live show, wherever you are, you always make the effort and you're always the guy trying to do as much mm -hmm. as you can and saying thank you. And it's like, it's, it's always a really nice touch. That's awesome. Thank you. Um, okay. There's, there's people talking about beer in the comments and more food. And I like all German beer. Let's put that out there. I like it all. But <laughs> let's not start the debate right now. <laughs> Kolsch or alt beer? Go. <laughs> <laughs> no but man I, I thank you thank you so much for your time that was awesome. really thank you really very cool. much i'm so sorry i was late oh, um, you saw no, the genuine it's... reaction i was like oh my god like no, i remember no, no. that we had it booked i just didn't remember which day right. yeah. and it was a thursday i thought it was next thursday i'm sorry so that, apologies to gibson and the phone we yeah. made the hour it was a grand hour so thank yeah, you let's very, do it again let's do it again time. Oh, please. Yes. Yeah, let me know. This, let like, me know. I, I got the fanboying out of me during this one, so I'll be better for next. I swear. Thanks, no worries, <laughs> dude. I'm, I'm always happy. I'm always surprised when people like our band, so thank you. Maybe yeah, next time well, we'll do one where I can be on my main camera and I could just do a room tour or something. Uh, I'm, I need I'm to figure that out. looking forward to that. Yeah. Awesome, man. Thank you so very much. Thank you, everyone in the chat. Please stay safe, be healthy, be good, keep making music. Go stream the Trivium album, uh, What the Den Men Say, because it's incredible. Dankeschön. And, uh, and we'll be 
uh, we'll be back soon. I'll be back soon. Matt will be back soon as well. He said oh, it. Yeah. Let's We've do all, it. You've all heard it. Let's talk more gear. I want to talk more gear next time. <laughs> oh, cool. <laughs> we'll do. Well, thank awesome. you very much, man. Awesome. Thank you, thank everyone. Peace, Bob. Tschüss. Tschüss. Tschüss.